Hi, and welcome back to this Thursday edition of Focal Point AFR Talk. Let's close the loop on the Ted Cruz discussion before we go back to the phones, 888-589-8840. Rob, let's grab clip number eight. This is Martin uh, Bashir, and I don't know if you remember David Koresh, uh, but just so you get the backstory, David Koresh led a cult in Waco, Texas. This goes back to like 1993, 1994. Led a cult. He was a, a pretty whacked out guy, thought he was the uh, Messiah. Uh, had this compound outside Waco. Somehow the word got out there that children were being abused inside this compound. There were maybe 80, 90 people. Now, it turns out there was nothing to it. There was no truth to it. But Janet Reno, who was the, whatever she was at the time, under Bill Clinton, she sent tanks in there. They they, uh, wound up lighting the place on fire, and everybody burned up. The whole place burned down. Everybody died in the fire, all in this effort to try to stop. I mean, it was overkill. But what they were dealing with was a guy who was a cult figure that, in their view, was endangering the lives of children. Now, here is Martin Bashir talking about Ted Cruz, clip eight. Let's listen. McKay, do you think Ted Cruz is a bit like the David Koresh of the Republican (laughs) Party? He's a bit like a character who believes himself to be anointed, believes himself to be a prophet, ignores everything and torches the place in the process. <laughs> you always Thank come you. to me with these excellent comparisons that get me in trouble with Republican sources. <laughs> no, I mean, I think, look, you know, Ted Cruz, there, there are two a, lines of thinking on him. Is he the David Koresh of the Republican Well, there, there are two lines of thinking on him. One is that he truly believes that he is, you know, the savior of the Republican so Party. So he does believe that. There's, other, there's the other line of thinking that this was purely craven and cynical, that he knew from the start that he was never going to defend Obamacare, but that this would put him, uh, you know, in a great Raises position profile. for 2016 to right. run for president, right? Right. It's unclear which of those is true. I tend to lean toward the latter. I think of most politicians like that generally are setting themselves up. The, but but the question is, next time he stages a, you know a stunt like this, will the House Conservative Caucus, will the Tea Party Caucus follow him uh, the same way that they, they did this time? Because I'm hearing from a lot of Republicans that even among the Tea Party set that are feeling pretty burned. Well, I'm not hearing that from the people that are calling this program. Tea Party's not feeling burned by Cruz. They are feeling burned by McConnell and Boehner, but they're not feeling burned by Ted Cruz. They're energized by Ted Cruz. Now, here's Paul Begala, big-time Democrat, clip nine, and here's his his assessment of who the big winner is here. Isn't that the lesson here, that, that House Republicans, and you can put Ted Cruz in there, showed that there's actually a group uh, less common than the people behind the Obamacare website? <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, well I, I agree with everything, uh, General Zed, except this. Ted Cruz is a big winner. Yeah. The Republican brand is way down, but the Cruz brand is way up. I, I talked to I'm from Texas. I, I grew up there, and, and I've talked to friends there today. And the business community is furious. Business Republicans are furious. But the grassroots loves this. And we'll know soon. We'll see. I bet you you'll see invitations rolling in to Senator Cruz to come to the, the Reagan Day dinner in one state and the Lincoln Day dinner in another state or whatever, you know, Republican. He's going to be a huge draw. I think this is a big win. And so the last right, that that's good enough. This, that's I all we need to hear is, out of that. Let's just pull out I, of that clip because I think we got what we needed out of there. Paul Begala, big time Democratic strategist. Ted Cruz is a big winner in all of this. The Cruz brand is way up. GOP brand is down. Cruz brand is up. He's going to be invited to Reagan Day dinners in one state, Lincoln Day dinners in another. Uh, he's going to be a huge draw. This is a big win. For Ted Cruz. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Doyle, Paris, Tennessee. Doyle, thanks for calling. Thanks for waiting. What's on your mind? Oh, well, I uh, I was listening to uh, Kevin McCullough before you and then you uh, kind of talking about similar things. He was talking about being discouraged last night. And I, I know it's tempting to uh, to set in uh, discouragement over, over uh, the results. And you were talking about how the, a lot of people are saying... Uh, Oh, yeah, the Tea Party is peaking. Uh, and here's my thought. Um, I keep thinking about Romans 8, where God says, uh, or where Paul says, uh, uh, God works all things together for good, for those of us who love him and are called according to his purpose. And then again, he says, if God is for us, who can be against us? And I'm, I'm just so encouraged by the fact that, that 
Ted Cruz and several others really stood up and fought. Uh, and knowing that there were, I think you said, 160 people that didn't bow the knee. So yeah, 144 members of the House, all Republicans, voted against this bill. And 18 senators, all Republicans, voted against this bill. That's 162 members of Congress who did not bow the knee to bail last night. That, to me, is very encouraging because I honestly was thinking there might we might have 20 or 30. And uh, uh, maybe those are just the core of the core, as you say. Uh, but, uh, but I believe that, like I think you've said uh, in recent days, we, we will lose some battles. And here we lost this battle. But the good news is that this battle drew in reinforcements that we needed badly. And it helped us to see that we actually can do a lot more with a lot less than what we've been led to believe. All right, Duel. Listen, I appreciate that. And I agree with you. I, I think Ted Cruz, you know, we just heard Paul Begali. He's this is a big winner for Ted Cruz. His brand is way up. You know, you got this McKay Coppins from BuzzFeed saying, look, his brand is way down. Martin Bashir thinks he's the David Koresh of the Republican Party. He's an arsonist, going to burn the whole thing to the ground. Paul Begal is a smarter guy than Martin Bashir. He says, no, his brand is way, way up on this deal. He's galvanized and energized the grassroots. All right, thanks for the call. Let's go to Doug in Bella Vista, Arkansas. Doug, thanks for calling and thanks for waiting so patiently. What's on your mind? Oh, hey, how's it going, Brian? Love Good. How are you? Hey, I was just... I got a polling call two days ago, and I thought, well, if I can get him on Brian Fisher's show, I'll call him and let him know how this polling, how the question was. All right, good. It was, it was, it was a trick polling call. It was, if you were to vote today, who would you vote for, Senator Democrat Senator Pryor or um, Republican Senator Tom Cotton? And I'd press the one I wanted. Then it asked, well, do you see the Tea Party as favor favorably or unfavorably? If favorably press one, if unfavorably press two, and I've seen them as favorably. And then it asks, do you think Congress should shut down the government to stop Obamacare? If you think they should, press one. If you think they shouldn't, press two. And I hung up because that's a trick question. If I'd have answered that in any way, it would be I was agreeing that the Repu House Republicans were shutting down the government when it was Harry Reid and Obama shutting down the government. They yeah. passed everything. You know, it was a trick question. So if you've answered yeah. that, you are. You're admitting you blame the Republicans for shutting down. So I was yeah. going to let you know. No, All I right. Well, that's – and I appreciate hearing that, Doug, because, you know, that really is a, a false choice because the Republicans were never in favor of shutting down government. In fact, they sent one bill – the House sent one bill after another over to the Senate that would keep government open. It would defund Obamacare, but it would keep government open. It, in fact, it would fund everything in government except for uh, uh, Obamacare. So the Republicans weren't the ones shutting down anything. They were sending one bill after another over to the Senate to make it possible for the government to stay open. If the Senate had acted on any one of those four bills that the House sent over, government never would have shut down. Republicans were the ones that were making that possible. So, again, it gives you an idea, and I appreciate the call, Doug, because that gives you a peek into – how they shape these polls, again, they're not so much trying to reflect public opinion, but they're trying to shape public opinion. That's what these polls are really all about. It's just a, another tool that political parties use to try to shape the way people think about issues. Let's go to Sam in Ethel, Mississippi. Sam, thanks for calling and thanks for waiting. What's on your mind? Yeah, uh, as far as the Tea Party is concerned, uh, I have voted Republican ever since I I never voted anything but Republican, but uh, I have voted for every Republican that's ever been on the ballot, and I think I'm a lot like the Democrats that in the South used to be. They voted Democrat, no, no telling what. But I, my eyes have been open. We've got one here in Mississippi, Thad Cochran, that is needs to go. He is part of the establishment. He just, he's, a, he's part of the round table, and that's what they want all young people like Ted Cruz who come in. You sit down, you keep your mouth shut, your time comes, and then you'll get a piece of the act. You might get $3 million to send back to your constituents to make them think you're doing a good job. When you don't have, you know, there's not $3 million up, dollars up there to send to anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, and the interesting thing, Ray, or I mean, uh, Sam, appreciate your call. 
is uh, Senator Cochran is going to get a challenge in the Republican primary from Chris McDaniel, who's a state senator. He's going to be a guest on this program. He's going to be with me in studio tomorrow to explain why it is he is launching a challenge against an incumbent, longstanding Republican senator, uh, Thad Cochran. So you want to tune in tomorrow and hear the conversation with uh, Chris, Med- uh, Chris McDaniel. That'll be some kind of breaking news. I think he's officially going to declare his candidacy today, but we'll have him on tomorrow Uh, just from a news standpoint, to talk about why it is he's a young guy. Why is he going after an old, experienced Republican senator with a massive war chest? So you want to hear that tomorrow. All right, Sam, appreciate the call. Grab one more call before the break. Let's go to Ray in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Ray, uh, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. And by the way, just a reminder, if you live in a city that does not have one of our stations in it, you can catch us all the time at AFR.net. We have audio and video streaming, AFR.net. We have podcasts. We also have apps for the iPhone, for the Android, and for the iPad. Talking to a good friend of mine uh, who lives here in in the same city where I do, he downloaded the app for his iPhone so he can listen to Focal Point and AFR Talk on the go. So AFR.net is where you can keep track of us, even if you're not in the city that's got one of our stations. Ray, in Atlanta, go ahead. What's on your mind? Hey, how you doing, my friend? Good. Good. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm, I happen to be a truck driver, and I'm in Jackson, Mississippi today, so I caught your program. Uh, and I'm glad to be able to talk to somebody on a talk show that I get to give a biblical point of view. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, I, I believe, uh, and I, I, I take a lot of flack because I've never been a Democratic temp- sympathizer. I'm a Ronald Reagan Republican. Uh, that's hard for a black man, and believe me, no black people that I know like me for that reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is unfortunate. Yeah. But I don't believe that there's a two-party system anymore, and, and I believe that it doesn't start right now. It started when MacArthur and Eisenhower and the general said, don't rebuild Germany and Japan after the war. Mm-hmm. And I think that having done that already, that the Communist Manifesto has almost come to reality in that the United States has been taken over without firing a single shot. Ray, uh, listen, c- can you hang on for two more minutes? Sure. I want to let you finish your thought, and I'm coming up against a hard break. Can't do anything about it. Ray from Atlanta will be back with us right after the break. Stay with us. Focal Point AFR Talk. 